DCF Online. It is really good to have you with us, so thanks for tuning in. Oh, and a Happy New Year to you as well. I guess a lot of people are happy to see the end of 2020 and are really anticipating what God has for us in 2021. Our family is currently on holiday, so if you are on holidays or if you're at home or wherever you are tuning in, I really hope you enjoy today's service. In the right-hand side of your screen, you'll see a chat section there. You are more than welcome to pop on there and say hi, um, and someone will be there to say hi back to you. For something more private, uh, hit the request prayer button, and somebody will speak with you in a private manner, and you can uh, be prayed for there as well. Um, to keep up with what's happening in church life, especially as we're entering a new year, keep an eye on our social media pages. So we've got Facebook and Instagram. Keep an eye on those things. Lots of events um, are going to be kicking off later in the year. But for now, um, get your communion um, emblems ready. Uh, we'll hand over to our worship team and we'll also have communion and following a message after that. So we'll see you at the end. Bye.
shadow you will climb, mountain you will climb, me. No, I won't get down, I won't turn and come after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb, come after me. No, I won't get down, I won't turn. Jesus was often in trouble uh, from the religious people in his day uh, because he was eating with tax collectors, he was eating with notorious sinners, he was eating with women of ill repute, etc, etc. And in the culture of that time, uh, often you ate with people because you were part of a guild, like a trade guild. And these trade guilds were often aligned to uh, a god of the day. Maybe it was Diana, maybe it was one of the other gods. So to be part, to work, you had to be part of the trade guild and part of the guild was to have these feasts uh, that honoured the God that you were aligned with in your trade. So eating with people kind of said, oh, I'm like-minded, I'm aligned with these people. Well, so when Jesus was eating with sinners, they were concerned well, with what it looked like, what message was being sent. Jesus, you're supposed to be a rabbi and you're, and you're eating with these sinners. just want to read from the book of Matthew, chapter 9, verses 9 to 13. Jesus calls Matthew is the, is the heading. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at his tax collector's booth. Follow me, be my disciple, Jesus said to him. So Matthew got up and followed him. Later, Matthew invited Jesus and his disciples to his home as dinner guests, along with many tax collectors and other disreputable sinners. But when the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with this scum? When Jesus heard this, he said, healthy people don't need a doctor, sick people do. Then he added, now go and learn the meaning of this scripture. I want you to show mercy, not offer sacrifices, for I have come to call not those who think they're righteous, but those who know they're sinners. You know, Jesus' way is countercultural. It was countercultural then, it's countercultural now. Those who, those who thought they didn't need Jesus got upset, like the Pharisees. They got upset. They got angry. Those who knew they needed him, like the scum that the Pharisees talked about, well, they got lunch. They got saved. They got healed. They got restored. They got a new life. And so did a lot of their friends. You know, today as, as we come around the table, as we come around the table of communion, around the Lord's table, this is Jesus' table, we come as people who know we need a saviour, who knew we need a saviour and accepted Jesus as our saviour. We really 
do come and eat together like like-minded people gathered at the table of our king and and as we gather together there's really only one thing that defines us and that's we're his children we're his church and there's a sense of unity there's one agenda to remember and honor and and thank the one who gave his body and his blood that we may freely sit at his table like Matthew did like Matthew's friends did and have communion with one another and have communion with him. You know, sometimes we might feel like we're scum. We might feel like I've got no right to sit at the table. And you know, we don't, but we have a right because Jesus shed his blood. Jesus' body was broken so that we might come into right relationship with him, so that we might accept that gift and be restored into fellowship with the Father. So as we come to the table with each other online, as we come, um, the whole body of Christ all over the world, as we come together, we're one. Uh, and we all sit robed in Jesus' righteousness. And, and if that's not you today, then accept his gift. It's for us all. It's for us all. Let's... Uh, let me just pray and then we'll eat and drink. Father, thank you. Jesus, thank you that we were once outside your kingdom, outside your family, but because of the blood shed at the cross, because of the forgiveness um, that you won for us at the cross, God, we can come into your family as dearly loved children. That which was lost is now found. So, Father, we thank you today. And I just pray for anyone who may be listening today and they feel like they're outside of the family. Father, just show them that it's, it's just a request away and they're in your family. All are welcome as we accept the gift of Jesus at the cross. Thank you, Lord. Let's eat and drink this morning.
Hi everybody, welcome to Dolby Christian Family Church Online. I hope you had a really great Christmas and um, welcome to 2021. Happy New Year. I want to talk this morning about what will not change in 2021 in spite of all that may change. And uh, you know, we've just come out of a year, they say, like no other, and it really was a year like no other. Never before has the whole world gone through something the same together to the extent we did in 2020. There's been pockets of things here and there, but we are now a global village and the village had a pandemic. We've come out of it shaken up, a bit disorientated, uncertain, but presented with a new landscape. The world has changed. It isn't just the pandemic, it's also the political landscape has changed. Where once we may have felt like we were quite secure, we're not quite sure anymore, at least some of us, many of us may be. We need to let go of old paradigms and embrace new ones. We need to accept that we face a different world, we really do. In many ways, it's going to be difficult, but even that presents new opportunities. Selwyn Hughes, writer of Every Day with Jesus, passed away a few years ago. He said, the world is changing. If we play by the old rules, we'll lose new battles. Now, if he said that back when he did, how much more is that true today? But in order to embrace change, we have to be anchored somewhere secure in our souls. We have to have a, a safe place, an unchanging place or person. And that place, that person is the Lord Jesus Christ. And today I want to talk about him and bring some aspects that will see us well through 2021, no matter what comes. First of all, I want to say that Jesus, he's a new beginning. Revelations 22 verse 16 says, I, Jesus, am the bright and morning star. Jesus is the one that ushers in a new day. You know, that bright morning star is the star that's up there in the sky, first thing in the morning, right at dawn. He is, I love this, the king of the morning. Therefore, we can embrace a new day with confidence when we have our faith and our trust in him. Isaiah 43, 18 to 19 says, Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. This is an encouragement to let go of old paradigms to let go of what was and embrace what now is. And we can do that with confidence when Jesus Christ is Lord in our lives. The world has changed, as I said, but he ushers in a new morning. He does a new thing. It's not like I am doing, it is I have done. It now has come. And we need to let go of the old paradigms to be able to travel well in the new one. And. Uh, I love it that he talks about a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And that kind of acknowledges the fact that the world we live in is somewhat of a wilderness. It's not ideal. It's not right. It's not as it ought to be. So I'm not saying that the new world that we face now is a better world. I am saying it's a different world. And many aspects of it are very unsettling. But God promises to make a way in that difficult place. I will make a road in the wilderness and I will put rivers in the desert so we can actually travel in this new landscape, no matter how difficult we might find it, with confidence, knowing that he is providing a way through it and he is providing nourishment and refreshment for our soul in it. And I think if we focus on the wilderness and take our eye on what God is doing, we become unglued. We become um, anxious. We become a little bit um, difficult. We become defensive. But if we keep our eyes on Jesus and know that he is making a way in this new place that we don't really like, it's going to be okay. He's doing a new thing and we can have confidence. Uh, we can end up what God is doing if we keep our eyes focused on the wilderness and the desert. 
I love Psalm 37, verse 1 4. This has been such a blessing to me over many years. Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity, for they will soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. There you go. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. There it is. Don't be anxious. Don't fret. Don't argue. Don't fight about what is wrong. But just do good. Trust God. Dwell in the land. Feed on his faithfulness and watch him do what he promises to do. So we can embrace change confidently because God is making a way in this new world. Jesus, he's our strength. I don't know about you, but but learning new things and having to constantly adapt and change and, and put plans together and have to rip them up has been somewhat exhausting. And learning new things and embracing a new season can be very challenging. But here we go, 2 Corinthians 12, 9. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. I absolutely so love that. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest on me. He is our strength and he promises grace even when we feel weak. Listen to this, Philippians 4.13. You know it well. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Proverbs 8.14. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. So as we learn to navigate a different world, we can know that we can go to God for our strength. And uh, that's a really great promise. So number one, he's a bright morning star. He ushers in the new day. Number two, Jesus Christ, he's our strength. Number three, Jesus, he's our light. Now, you know, little children, I, I always imagine this, um, a little child, they, they go somewhere unfamiliar. They wake up in the night. They don't know where they are. They don't know where maybe the bathroom is. They don't know where mum and dad's room is. But mum and dad know their way around. They're confident in that new and dark place. So as the child puts his hand in the hand of mum or dad, he can walk around that house knowing he's going to be okay. And I love this verse in Psalm 139, verse 1 to 12. If I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness will not hide from you, but the light shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both a light to you. Do you know what? God is not uncomfortable in 2021. Sometimes we think God is happy when life was as we thought it ought to be. But God is completely at ease and he's completely relaxed about the year 2021. And he knows his way through it. He knows his way through the unfamiliar and sometimes dark places. And as we put our hand and our heart and our trust in the hand of Jesus, we know he knows his way through this and he will lead us safe and secure. That parent doesn't deliberately or even, you know, doesn't, doesn't lead the child into a, a wall, doesn't lead the child to, strip, to trip down steps, but the parent carefully leads that child to a safe place and God will not lead you into a brick wall and he will not he will not lead you to a place where you're going to trip and fall that is a word for somebody today you may be afraid that if I just trust if I let go and trust that God is going to lead me into a brick wall smack no he won't he knows his way through 2021 he knows how we're going to get through this it's all good. We can trust him. Uh, Jesus. So number one, Jesus is the bright morning star. He brings in the new day. Number two, he's our strength. Number three, he's our light. He knows his way around these new places. Jesus, I love this, is king over the storm. 
Psalm 29, verse 3 and 4. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is over, not under, over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. What a beautiful word. Verse 10 and 11. The Lord sat enthroned at the flood. And the Lord sits as king forever. The Lord will give strength to his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. When the storm is raging, it's hard to hear the voice of the Lord over the tumult. But his voice is over it, not under it. Think about the disciples when they when they went out on, on the um, Sea of Galilee. There was two occasions I, I think of right now. Well, the first that I can think of is when Jesus was asleep in the boat and the storm blew up and the disciples said, come on, Jesus, we're going to drown. And he stood. Imagine this. He stood there at the boat and he commanded the storm to cease. And it did. Those disciples knew this psalm. They grew up with these scriptures. What do you think they were thinking when they see Jesus, this man that they know and they're in the boat with, speak his voice over the stormy waters. The next time, of course, is very famous when they were in the boat and the storm rose and then Jesus came walking on the waters and he then allowed Peter to walk with him on those stormy waters. Do you know, the storms may rage in 2021. I want you to take this into the new year. The Lord is king over the flood. And he invites us to walk with him over the flood. Don't be afraid. Don't fight it. Don't stop moving forward. He is the king over the flood and his voice will speak peace. Now, there's another verse I want to speak about here. It's a little bit different, but similar. It's a beautiful verse, Philippians 4, 6 and 7. It says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, which I say, the peace of God that doesn't make sense, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. I love this passage. It has a personal story attached to it for me. It was a time when we shifted house. We moved into a housing commission home in Rockhampton and Nicole was a very young baby. And we had, you know, very little. And the previous tenants had taken the carpet out and they'd taken the kitchen units out. They weren't fitted. And uh, I was waiting to take delivery of the carpet. We discovered in the second hand shop that the previous tenants had sold the carpet and the kitchen units to this particular dealer. And I was waiting for delivery. The problem was, it was about now, it was the Christmas break, and I really needed that stuff in the house. And I was getting anxious, I wanted to put it all together. And we had people coming over for New Year's Eve. Why, I'll never know, but there we go, we did. And I was this particular day anxious about it, I was fretting, because they said, we're not delivering because it's the Christmas break. And I saw this verse and I said, well, Lord, I'm just requesting. I want that carpet and I want my kitchen cupboards. And that day the man rang, he said, can you take delivery today? And they delivered it. Now I know it's not always as easy and simple as that, but it just told me that God is concerned about not just our our absolute gut-wrenching dramas, but he's concerned about the details of our lives. So in 2021, remember Jesus is king over the flood. And remember that he's interested in the details of your life. So don't fret over it. Pray over it. Now we come to Jesus is our friend. When when times are changing and, and it's all a bit confusing, we really need good friends. And Proverbs 18, 24 tells us there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And Jesus is that friend. And I don't know about you, but when I am feeling disorientated, a bit under it all, a good friend is priceless. They come, they hear you out, they understand you, they get you, and then they give you a little bit of perspective and set you straight again. And Jesus is that friend. Lean hard on him through 2021. Pour out your troubles to him and listen to what he has to say to you. And lastly, I want to talk about this. Jesus, he's the good shepherd. I'm going to read from Psalm 23. It's very familiar, but I want to draw something out of this. 
Let me read it to you now. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yes, though I, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is such a beautiful psalm, but it's very personal. And Jesus being the good shepherd for someone else is no good to me. He wants to be my good shepherd. And as we come into 2021, let me encourage you to make Jesus Christ your personal shepherd and king. Because if you do that, whether it's beside still waters, whether it's beside green pastures, whether it's beside uh, through a, a valley of death, whether it's actually in the, even the presence of your enemies, he will be with you and he will see you through. This is a brand new year. There will never be another 2020, thank goodness. But if we've learned anything from 2020, we cannot predict what will come in 2021. But we can with utter confidence know that God is unchanging. Jesus Christ is Lord and Saviour. He promises to be with us. He brings in that new season, that new day. And we can go into it confidently, knowing that He is the unchanging one. You know what? He knows how to navigate difficult and unfamiliar places because whether it's dark or, or light, He knows His way around. He's as much at ease in 2021 as He was in 1984. <laughs> he is the architect of the new day. We make our plans. You know, I hate New Year's resolutions because they're always short-lived. But I saw this um, on Instagram this week and it's so good. It said, goals for 2021. This is it. This is this person's goals. Start with Jesus. Stay with Jesus. Finish with Jesus. No matter what plans you've laid, hold them lightly. Go for them. But ultimately, hang on to Jesus. Let me pray for you. Let me pray for you. And if you've never, ever asked Jesus Christ to be Lord and King of your life, there's a couple of things you can do to just start that process. Well, there's three things you can do. One thing you can do is you can click the raised hand button and one of our pastoral team run will we'll get in touch with you. There's next steps and if you lock, we can get in touch with you to help you on that journey. The second thing is you can text yes to that number on the screen and uh, again, we'll we'll be in touch with you to see if there's anything we can do to, to help you with that. But you know, the most important thing you can do is you can just pray. You can say, Jesus, I'm coming into a new year and I don't know what it brings, but I want to do it well. Will you come into my life? Will you be King and Lord of my life? Will you forgive me of my sin and give me a brand new start? Let it not just be a new year, but let it be a new start for you. And uh, let me pray for you now. And if, if that's where you are, you just reach out to God while I pray and, and uh, He will come. Father, I thank you for 2021. I thank you that it is a new year, but it's uncertain. We can't lay firm plans. We can't make promises to ourselves or even others at times without um, the possibility of it being changed. But Lord, we can, we can lock ourselves in with you and knowing whether it's a storm raging or whether it's peaceful and calm, you are there with us. Father, I pray for everyone within the sound of my voice that God, they will know you who is King and Lord of all, that they will have the peace of God that doesn't make sense. And Lord, they will have the courage to let go of the old and embrace the new, knowing that the one thing that doesn't change is you. Father, we thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for your time. I trust that's been an encouragement. 2021, I just want to leave this one thing with you. It is so important. 
Jesus never changes. He is your one sure place and with him you can navigate whatever comes with confidence. God bless you. We'll see you again soon. Bye. Thanks so much for being part of our service today. We really appreciate you connecting with us, whether it's online or in person. So thanks again. We hope you've been really encouraged this morning. If you would like to respond to something in that message, there's a raised hand icon on the right hand side there. Click on that and somebody will be in touch with you. Um, we love connecting, so especially in our life groups. So if you are not a part of a small group, our, our life groups, um, I would really encourage you, especially as we're coming into the new year, to uh, get in touch with somebody and join a life group. Uh, they're really, really worth their time in attending. Anyway, thanks again for being, um, being online with us and uh, we really hope to see you really soon. See ya.